It's Thursday at 4 o'clock, Chelsea. Yeah, that's right. And you're watching Chelsea and Tony live. And we're going to be talking about the new Sony camera, the A7R Mark IV, and our review and some things that happened to us during that. We're going to be reviewing your street photography photos. So if you have not already submitted those, you can go to scp.io slash submit. And we'll do a refresh during the show to see some new photos submitted then. We've got Sam here, and she's going to be reading your questions and your comments and relaying those to us. Hi, Sam. Hi. I'm ready for those questions. <laughs> yes. So get some good ones ready and give those to Sam. And then, of course, we have Justin here holding down the fort, manning the battle station. Whoops. Hi. <laughs> trying to make everything <laughs> run smoothly. Too much pressure. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so go to sdp.io slash submit and get your pictures in. And next week, well, we were away, so we didn't do a poll on that. So we're going to have to make it up on the fly what next week's theme is. Maybe, okay, so I guess follow us on Twitter and we'll yeah. tell you maybe we'll think of it. Facebook. Maybe we'll think of it. We'll be inspired during the show. Or maybe if you guys watching, maybe if you have some ideas, you can let Sam know and she'll relay them to us. Yeah, see what people say, Sam. And... Let's take a minute and thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Yeah, whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. They have beautiful, award-winning designer templates. They're so easy to make. If you can drag and drop, you can make your own Squarespace website. We have four between the two of us. Mm -hmm. uh, I have one, so Tony's the wild guy over here. But you can try it out and see why we like it so much by going to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Sign up for that free trial, and if you decide you like it, you can use the coupon code Chelsea for ten percent off. Thanks, Squarespace. Uh, do you want to talk about your experiences yeah, with the Sony first? Let's just or? go with the news while it's fresh in my head because we just got back okay. from New York City. We just got in last night. Um, we got to use this camera tethered, and then we got our own copies to use. Tony and I each got a camera, and they set up some pretty amazing photo shoots. And the first video that we did, um, they were from us using just a tethered camera on a stand, and this camera is fast. I love the the new ergonomics. I love that they listened about the buttons, which were kind of like flat and difficult to feel. They definitely improved the body of the camera. Um, it feels more like the Nikon bodies now, right? Yeah, and I'm I'm like a and it's weather sealed now too. <clears throat> like the complaints that people had, were a lot pretty of much them, addressed. a lot of them. Um, so our very my very first first impression was like I'm gonna throw down and just buy two of these, and and we're gonna get them. And then we got our own review copies, um, and there were some like bugs and some problems. Uh, with the autofocusing. We're going to get more into that with our full review. We're going to have that coming out soon. We did get to shoot with Manny Ortiz's copy that he got, and his worked fine. So these were pre-production, um, and they have some issues. So I'm going to just, I'm pre-ordering mine anyway, and I kind of just take, I'm taking a gamble that they're going to get it sorted out. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like software stuff. Yeah, and I, I'm sorry I don't have it on this computer because two minutes before the live show went, I found the pictures I took with Manny's camera, but I posted one to Instagram, both a wide shot and then like a tight crop so you could see the detail. And uh, I'll say my experience with uh, on Manny's camera, with eye detect autofocus for a tight headshot at 85.14, like really shallow depth of field, especially with those 60 megapixels, like the entire eyelash is not in focus. That's how shallow the depth of field is. Yeah. But it did get, mm, let's say half the shots were like tight in focus with eye detect autofocus. And that's that's about what we've come to expect because there's just no tolerance, you know, little bits of movement between the model and the photographer and little adjustments to the, to the anyway, that's like, that's good. It's not perfect, but it's not perfect on any camera yet. So I, that, but it was only minutes ago that I really became satisfied that there are working copies of yeah, the camera. They're, no, they're definitely working copies because I used one at the event. Yeah. But to get a broken one, it was an extremely frustrating event. Of course, not just for us and other reviewers, but for the team there, I think. Can't speak for them. Um, yeah, I'm still going to pre-order them because I feel like they're going to sort it out. And if they don't, then I'll just cancel my order but i definitely want to be in line so i am excited about this and please stay tuned for the follow-up video because we'll have far more information let's take a look at some people's street photography no photo selected uh and these were sent in before the show but it will import live in just a couple of minutes i love the mood of this photo yeah, it almost feels like a house party, though, right? Yeah, that's what I think is cool about it. Like, this is the guy that sells you weed in high school. Do you know what I mean? 
It seems like a serious accusation, Chelsea. <laughs> Not in some states. Cool. I like that. All right. So what I like about this is the like face that's painted on the building and the woman in the foreground and that sort of like juxtaposition. I feel like there's two different directions going on. Your eye kind of bounces back and forth between them. I feel like it's like HDR and there's a real lack of contrast in this photo. Mm. There's something very washed out looking about it. I'm just realizing that it's raining. Maybe I did not it. see that at first. Oh, maybe that's it. And then I think maybe Rudy cranked up the clarity so we could see that a little bit it's more. It's not raining. This is a fountain. See how it's dry over here? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, all right. It's a fountain. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to give it a pick. I like that. Okay, let me go back. We'll pick it. That is interesting. It might have even worked if he had crouched down even farther than her head would have been in front of this white part to give a bit more subject separation. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, so if he had just crouched down a little bit more, then oh, you're right. she would have stood out more. Yeah, that's something to think about. But I know with street photography, you have to react in an instant. You can't pose people on the side. <clears throat> Too small for that bike. This is very cute picture. Um, I think it's a good slice of life. But again, with the composition here, we have these people in the background who are right behind our subject. And we want to see a little more subject separation. And here you have a second. I think you could have taken one big step to the right and had these subjects separated a little bit more and, and improve the composition. But I still think it's a nice moment. It's Me like too. a good slice of life kind of picture. Me too. I like this one. Very cool. I love the motion that you added to the photo. If you had just frozen everything and he was standing there like this, then it would have been far less exciting. And I'm, I'm just getting this whole mood uh, along with the subject. So I'm going to give that one a pick. I like that a lot. Great shot, Thomas. Um, I'm a big fan of this photo. I think that to me, it looks like someone holding a broom and they're drinking. Um, I, I think it tells a great story and it's interesting. I haven't seen a picture like this before and that always excites me. Especially with the bottle and the trash in the foreground. It's almost like it ties in, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. I'm giving this one a pick as well. Shot, Thomas Love. We're off to a good start. Yeah, these are all great pictures. Good morning, Shanghai. This <sighs> I one... just love the geometric yeah, me arrangement too. here. And we get, give it a pick. Okay, I liked that one too. Ooh, the eye... Okay, you guys, every photo, you're killing it. The eye contact here is what makes it. I'm going to give that a pick. The motion, the eye contact, I get a sense for the scene, um, but I'm still pulled right into the to the subject. Uh, actually incredibly sharp for a panning shot like that. What? I love this one too. Yeah, that's really cute. I think you could actually brighten it and bump the contrast. This is so cute. That's good. I think you might be able to do less of the um, surf shop because the boards are just a little bit distracting from her. And now she, more of my focus is on her. Let's see, can you, no, you can't do a before and after of the crop. Yeah, but I think I'm gonna like the original crop. Um, I'll re-import some pictures because we're already through them. Do you have any questions for us, Sam? Uh, she said, one her finger up. There we go. On. I had to unmute you. <laughs> Sorry, I came at you fast with that one. <laughs> uh, I have a couple of questions coming in. Actually, I actually have a nice comment for me about the taking and selling professional portraits. Very briefly, someone just said, thanks for the pop-up dressing room tip. So I just thought I would mention that. And if they don't know what we're talking about, go by taking and selling professional portraits. At um, Northrop.photo, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I had to plug. Um, Tyler Barton says... Uh, sorry, no, that's a gear related question. We'll hold on to that one. Uh, Alan Gillis says, um, what are your favorite places that you have photographed? Uh, what's your favorite subject? And um, what's your favorite actual photograph? Wow, that's a, there's a lot there. <laughs> so our favorite place and our favorite subject and our favorite photo. photo. Um, well, I really loved Portugal and Iceland. And my favorite subjects are animals and nature, landscapes, wildlife, things like that. I'm going to say my favorite photo was um, in Norway. We had our friend Erlen take us up like 
before dawn and get hike up to the top of this mountain in the dark and then the sky's cleared and we just had this amazing moment and we were there in a new place with our daughter and niece and Erilyn yeah, and just you. having a, a great time, but also the picture turned out good. That one's in my portfolio. Hmm. Norway's pretty amazing. Norway is amazing. Do you have anything else, Sam? Uh, yeah, Don Edwards would like to know, what decision factors do you use on whether to publish your street photo in black and white versus color? Oh, this is a very common question, black or white, black and white or color. Um, for black and white, I'm typically looking for form and shapes and line and light and contrast. And if the color is distracting from the subject, that a lot of the times in street photography, there are um, a lot of people and colors in the background you might not want to stick out so much, then you put it into black and white. Um, a lot of the times people use black and white as a crutch. Like if you just put a picture in black and white, it's going to make it better. And that's not really the case. Um, I think that photos with st strong geometry lend themselves to black and white well. So what do you think, Tony? Does that sum it up pretty well? I think with street, I might go black and white by default unless I feel like the color adds something to it. Just yeah. because it's such a traditional format. But Well, Giselle does a lot of... Giselle Dupre, she's a friend of ours and a very good street photographer. Street photographer. She does a lot of color and pops things with flash and it looks really cool. Mm. So yeah. color can be a big part Modern of Modern street photography. So here's a <clears> black <throat> and white photo from Hugo in Madrid. And I, I, this one just made me stop. I skipped through a bunch and I, I guess I like the sort of arrangement of subjects. It seems like an interesting moment. I was curious about what was going on. So good shot, Hugo. I, I'm struggling to come up with feedback for you that maybe I'd raise the shadows a little bit because I, I don't love that his face is so dark. This is a cool shot and I think it, it conveys the scene, but I, it, it's a cool shot. It's more like a, a cityscape or something like it doesn't tell a story about any individual person, which is, I guess, how part of how I define street photography, but it does say like, Hey, this street is bright and busy. Yeah. It would be cool if you got, if one person stood still in the chaos and then maybe it would tell that person's story in the chaos of this busy place. But it is an interesting, you have a really good technique worked out. I'd keep shooting that and see what you get. Yeah, so as I'm skipping through here, that it's really a compelling story that's making me stop on a photo. And and she thought she liked pigeons and then she didn't. Is yeah. that the story? I think it's a compelling story. It's a fun expression. Let's try this one in black and white and see what happens. Yeah, I feel like with black and white, you got to spend some time and actually like adjust the reds and the blues separately. But you're doing a good job there. Get her face nice and bright. I think the colors are a little strange. She, it looks like, do you see how this person is um like a yellowy green? And then there's all this fringy stuff that's kind of distracting. Yeah. And really, it's just, it's more about her. <clears throat> I think I like the black and white. Excuse me football in local quarters um i like the story but i feel like this is like um not the right moment they're just standing around and they have the soccer ball and maybe you could have got them running around or an action um he's sticking his hand out it seems i thought he was leaning but i think he's actually talking to someone and looking off the frame and i can't see who it is so i think that you found a moment with a lot of potential and maybe you needed to just shoot a little bit more mm -hmm. This is a very this famous one spot. one particular street, <laughs> yeah. Dumbo is beautiful. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful like spot. spot. But yeah, it's more like a cityscape. It doesn't tell a story. Also cool. a cool shot. It includes mm -hmm. a street. See, this one tells more of a story. And I think it's nice that you have a person in the foreground and the idea of a lot of people. And they're still blurred out. So um, they're, they're not as distracting. Yeah, I think protests are a compelling place to visit if you're interested in street photography. Yeah. You'll see a lot of people with emotions and people are pretty comfortable being photographed. I think color actually works in that one because once you go into black and white, the people in the background almost become too abstracted. Yeah. So. Uh, Ooh, Nick, I love this photo. You picked a subject and you got close. It looks wide angle. What is this? Uh, um, it's a 34 30, millimeter. Yeah. So that would be more like 70 millimeters. Okay. Full frame. He's just close. 
zoomed in close. Yeah, I actually think the Humans of New York has helped to okay. sort of bring these like impromptu portraits of strangers into the yeah. realm of street photography. Yeah, it's like street when portraiture. I, yeah, it's something a little bit different, but. Oh. This one's interesting. Um, it doesn't look like you know these people or like they're posed and you caught an impromptu moment and then used everything around it for some natural framing. I'd like to see the color version of the Sam just because I think you might be able to accentuate the lines of the walls and the stairs um, by separating the color channels. But I definitely like this photo. It's very cool. Yeah, I'm just, I, I want there to be a little more separation there because it seems like this has all been overexposed, like the highlights are blown out and then you tried to recover it or something and that's the way it's looking. So here, I can tell they're playing basketball, but we don't see eye contact with anybody. The basketball is just kind of off to the edge. Uh, I don't know, I'm just, I guess I'm missing more of a compelling story. There's My eye doesn't rest anywhere. Yeah, it's almost like most of the interesting stuff is happening over here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's a tough one. But I like that you got that moment Travelers from the past. Um, okay, well, I I kind of want to know more about this character that you're photographing because they're just kind of walking out into the street, but it's just cars, so I don't really have a sense for where you are or what the story is, and I can't see their face. I don't know if, who this person really is. I kind of want to turn them around and kind of see their character and what they're feeling, so I'm having a hard time getting a mood. Um and then the processing also makes it kind of like gl glamoury or painterly, which I think might be at odds with this kind of grungy character. Um, yeah. So yeah. I work on just like being more cohesive and getting all the mood and the feeling and the character and the place all matched up in one story. Yeah, just and get in front of people, which I know is a little bit uncomfortable, but you can see here from just getting that amount of eye contact makes a big difference in how compelling the shot is. Yeah, because this child definitely just stole an umbrella and ran. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. he's bringing the extra umbrella to an elderly person who needs it because well, he's a good person. You know what? I went into Petapixel comments today, so I have no faith in humanity. Oh, yeah. So that's going to be tinting every photograph I look at. Ooh, I think it's kind of neat that the bird's blocking her face. Uh, yeah, I thought that too. Sometimes it is when you pick. break a rule that it's things become weird. more compelling. Yeah. So, like the story here, I don't, I don't know that we see anything particularly unusual or striking about it. I think it is. I usually don't like photos of homelessness unless they're serving some purpose. But this kind of just like for me is more about the people just casually walking by when someone is clearly not in a good way. Street band in Barcelona. Um, usually I have this rule where like no street performers because it's such kind of an easy shot and it they're they're supposed to be there, you know? It's it's I don't know, it's not really that interesting of a story, like we all know they kind of perform. But I like that he engaged the photographer and did something a little bit interesting. And I like the guy off to the left who's also kind of making eye contact, so I think it's better than the average street performer picture. What I do, do like the black and white version better. I yeah. like the composition with the two lines of the <laughs> roofs of the buildings framing his head. And you have this nice line of the saxophone and then he's pointing right at you. I think it's very cool. I'm giving it a pick. I, the original picture had like all this chromatic aberration with purple and stuff. Hold on. I'll show you. You can see oh, yeah. it, it's actually very distracting wow. and I think there's not enough contrast. So... I know it's me, but I prefer the black and white. Let's go and find something that really catches our eye. Okay. Uh, well, okay. This is... Yeah, I mean, there, there's some story going on here. We have, like, the officers looking at this guy. I, I don't know exactly what's going on. I keep looking at it. I don't know what's going it. on, but it's yeah. interesting. Okay, another protester. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good and compelling shot. This is, I think, a solid street shot. I like this one. Mm -hmm. I definitely find it more interesting when it's not people who are specifically trying to present themselves, like street performers. 
No people here. Ooh, that one's kind of neat. Yeah, this Just is definitely of light. cool, mostly because of the processing. Very cool. Interesting shadow. Yeah, I think that's a good technique is to find places with interesting light and lines and hang out there until people come walking through. Ooh, this is a, a great scene, but again, I think eye contact here would help a lot. Wow. Go, just going through, I think we have a lot of pictures. That's more of like architecture. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like streak photos in black and white. Uh-oh. Okay. It's on, Yavor. <laughs> I'm just going to bump the contrast. <clears throat> What's that kid angry about? Oh, kids? Is the music too loud? Okay. I don't know what's happening in this one, but it looks interesting. Wow. I like that. Yeah, it's got like ducks and pigs and stuff. That's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> it's interesting. Kind of like it in just straight black and white. Wow. Jeez. That's definitely telling an interesting story. I like this. It's like we're getting a little trip around the world. Sam, do you have any other questions or comments? I do have some questions. Um... This is an interesting question from Bob uh, Steller. He says, there seems to be a growing sentiment that capturing images of homeless people uh, when shooting street photography is abusive or exploitative, 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 help, help, words. Exploitative, <laughs> I think yeah, you got you it, it right. yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Um, oh, I'm trying to think of the name I follow a, a program that helps people experiencing homelessness, and I have a friend that does a lot of volunteer work, and I talk to him. He works with the Salvation Army, and he goes out, and um, he brings care packages, and he helps people find shelters and things like that. And when I talked to him about it, his take was that it can be exploitative if you're just using the photos to just take a picture to make yourself look deep and there's no purpose and you're taking a picture of someone suffering or possibly in the worst moment of their life um, and you're not respecting their privacy just because they're there suffering out in the open. And I think that happens a lot. I think that a lot of photographers get so focused on taking a picture that's about them that they forgot they forget to honor their subjects. And a really good person to study, a photographer that I think sets a good example, is Mary Ellen Mark, because she would actually spend a lot of time with her subjects. She wouldn't just kind of do like a walk by and click what she thought what looked kind of interesting and then not tell the story. She would talk to them and interview them and actually help them. Um, one of her subjects was a young teenage pregnant girl and she actually offered her a place to stay i'm not saying you have to do that but i'm just saying that she clearly had respect and was trying to help these people so that's kind of my take and humans of new york is really good about that too they tell people stories and they let them own um the narrative of their own picture instead of taking a picture of someone and then making up a story which i think is um awful and unethical or just letting people make assumptions about a person yeah, that's a good take on it. Let's look at a few more I'm pictures. I'm long-winded today. I like the panning on this one. I think it's a good shot. I mean, there's not a deep story, but I think the panning itself makes it a little more compelling. Uh, I His face is so sort of underexposed here that I might just bump up the entire exposure. And um, But I, I think it's an interesting shot. Um, it's not... It's a little bit underexposed, too. Let me get into the develop view here. I feel like these two characters, I want to know more about them. I wish I knew a little more about their story. Yeah, and again, you know, getting in front of people with eye contact really helps. Um, this shot, I think, is really striking. It caught my eye. I like that it seems like you're seeing the face of the person, but you're not. I think that makes it interesting. <laughs> this one is such a fun mood i feel like i'm there i'm giving it a pick it's not technically perfect but it works it feels classic to me yeah it's close it's wide angle it feels intimate you're right it feels like you're there <laughs> i wish this were just a little i could see a little more of what's going on let's see 
It's a nice moment. <laughs> what? What is on this man's head? We'll never know. I think. Rude Lightroom scooter dad. Oh, that's one to one. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a cute picture. That's nice light. Oh. Don't eat the fish. I won't. I just wish we had a little pan there or something so we could see. Oh my gosh, and the next Sicilian fishmonger. Coincidence? <laughs> I wow. think not. Wow. This is really truly a sign. Don't eat the fish, anyone. Mexican fiesta. Why is it closed? I think there's something here. I'm trying to figure out. Is it here? This man texting? If maybe they should be closer, if they should fill the frame more with the building. Like if his head was right here, maybe even. Yeah, some additional subject separation could definitely help. I think I think you're right. That would help find some way to make it pop, <laughs> either in different light. Cute. Well, this is definitely interesting with the no head man. Let's see. Street photography is hard. Yeah, it, it really is hard. Um, and it takes a lot of time. It's not something that you, it takes years to develop and to make compelling photos. Um, I like this one. Yeah, I think it's, he's an interesting person and I think it's a good sort of impromptu portrait of him. Good shot, Terry. It needs contrast. Even if we keep it in color, I think we gotta. Wow. Cool boy. <laughs> this feels like a little slice of childhood, and I like that. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Where'd you take this picture, Jack? I feel like I've seen this guy before. You would remember him. He seemed super cool. Yeah, I like this one. I know it's a street performer, but come on. How could you not like him? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is really cute, yeah. Um, that's so cute. And we do have good subject separation going on there, too. Uh, I think what I would do is get this shot at 105 millimeters and then see if you can get closer and more wide angle to try to make a little bit more of an intimate feeling with it. I know at some point you're going to interrupt the action, but um, it, it can be worth it for a good shot. That's really cute. Yeah. I know you had a hard time with the color, though. I can see it's all funky, but wow. I'll give you a pick, Daniel. Oops, I uh -oh. hit the wrong key. That's okay. Um... Okay, so another protester, and he's holding a sign, but I don't know. There's not much more to it than that. There's no conflict or, like, compelling lighting or composition. There's good light. I think you got good lighting and a good moment, and I do want to know more about the story. I wonder if there uh, could have been a scene where there could have been another person that could have contributed to filling us in. That's just, like, a portrait. It's a nice portrait. Get a stick. Bendy. Oh, yeah. Good rolling shutter example. <laughs> I like this, um, like, retro 70s Spider-Man. I don't know what's going on here, but I absolutely love this picture. And I don't I'm giving know it a pick. that it counts as I don't know that it counts as, but you get, it, you get a pick. But we like it. <laughs> okay. I like this one, too. It's not on a street, but I'm still giving it a pick. But why is that dog's wiener pointing at these people? <laughs> I, you get a pick for that. There you it's go. interesting. I know we have a formula that everybody's going to try to repeat now. Yes, but framing. here you go. Natural framing. You will always win with this I'm composition. It a pick too. Oh, they're so happy for their kid. Yeah, but I think the compelling part of the story here is is the kid and his expression, and so you know it might be a good opportunity to get down to eye level. Yeah, maybe get a little closer and a little more wide angle. But it's still it's a really nice moment. <laughs> yeah, but look how happy his dad is. That's the sweetest picture. Ooh, I love the colors, like the black railing and then these four yellow things. There's something cool about this picture. Yeah, Orlando found a good spot. And in fact, I might even want to go a little tighter with it because, I, I don't know, the bushes and stuff back there detract from it a little bit. Um, so maybe if we just got in a little bit tighter. 
But I'm going to give this one a pick too. Orlando found a spot with interesting lines and then hung out for somebody to come through. Spot. Spot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm so mean. Okay. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, all the people are kind of cut off and not making eye contact. Wow. Gary, I like the color and these two guys are cool as heck. <laughs> wow. Okay. Oh, I love this one. Sam, this is the one you were talking about, isn't it? Sam said, I'm not sure if this is street. Yeah, but that's it. I loved it. I was like, I don't know if it's street, but I really like it a lot. <laughs> I yeah, like it a lot. That too. one definitely works. Sam, while we have you, do you have any questions or comments from the peeps? I do. Um, we have a question from our friend Jimmy Picks. Uh, Jimmy Picks says, Are photographs of protest more like journalism rather than street photography? I think it could be both. I think it's definitely kind of a slice of life, something that you see if you're out and about. What do you think, Tony? It's definitely journalism. Yeah, maybe it depends on what their goal for the image is. Yeah, that's a good question. What else do you have? Uh, we have a uh, 50 Canadian dollars from Greg H. Ooh. I think at the beginning of the show, you had asked a question uh, for people to tell me something, but I was looking at photos and I missed it. So I think this will make sense to you, even though it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, a show unlike a photos, like photojournalism, travel photography, or street photography. This came in at the way a little earlier. Did you ask people to make a suggestion about something? Yes, for themes for the show. So that would be okay. like street photography or portraits or wildlife. Okay. So he, he said a show unlike a photo. photo. That would really be slimming down our audience. Though. Yeah, I think we get like three <laughs> people submitting, but... <laughs> Um, we do try to make the topics broad so more people can participate, but like you're I didn't want to read it because he did give, give, uh, 50 Canadian dollars, $38 and 35 cents US. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you did the conversion. Of course. <laughs> thank you, Sam. Let's look at a Squarespace portfolio because let's face it. You got a lot of pictures. You don't just want people to look at them chronologically. You want people to see your best work first, especially if you're trying to sell your work and look professional. So let's go through. Which um, one is catching your eye? I kind of like this one. I like the, the layout. I don't think I've seen this before with the paper and the hmm. square things. Is that what you like? We can look. <laughs> okay. Let's look at Tattersall Photography, Tim Tattersall. He's a wildlife photographer. Okay, I did not pick up that you were a wildlife photographer from the front page. I know someone in Gainesville. So let's see. I know you're a photographer in Gainesville. This isn't too long. You have this contact information. Oh, but put your email address in there. Yep. Those forms. Nobody likes those forms. Yeah. All right, let's go home. Let's see. So here's your wildlife. Okay, so you're not just a wildlife photographer, but wildlife. Um, and then I like your little description here. It's easy to scroll through. That's nice. Ooh, oh, wow. I would okay. lead with this yeah, one. This is interesting. Picture. So lead with your most, most interesting picture. This one's gorgeous too. You have a lot of good pictures. You have a few that are just slightly weaker or less interesting. I think this one is less interesting. Um, so I would maybe, and this is not your strongest photo. So lead with your strongest photo and then only put the best even if it's just five pictures people will judge you on your worst picture i don't know why that's just the way that it works um i actually found the background a little distracting but it's not too, it's not bad and i'll make a web design suggestion your website has three main categories i would make each one of those a menu item because we want to be able to jump from one to the other yeah because i don't want should be to at the home top. all navigation and should then, be at the top yeah yeah Really smart, Tony. Your landscapes are nice too. I think um, one of the objectives for me to have a portfolio isn't always just to show off my pictures, but just to have a place that where I keep my best work and it gives me the opportunity to kind of, um, as I take new pictures, that gives me the opportunity to take off a picture and generally just level up my uh, photo taking ability. So you now have an objective anytime you go out to shoot. I want to take a better landscape photo than my worst photo so that I can improve my portfolio. And that's how you show your work as a photographer. So I think even if you're not a 10 year experienced photographer taking um, perfect photos, it's good to have a portfolio. 
I think this first portrait is is Your really strong definitely. and really draws you in. I, I think this photo, you should just take it out. That's a really strong picture. But the second one, since it's the same model, I would probably take this one out and keep this one here. Um, this one, I really like the flowing dress in the wind. So I think these, you have some good shots here. This one I would probably take out because we have a couple of shots there just to give you some sense for how we'd thin it out a little bit. Um, yeah, and I think that this, you're, you show a lot of promise as a photographer because you don't have a ton of pictures or models, but each one is getting better and um, yeah. I just say keep shooting and don't just keep adding more pictures. Like Tony said, if you add a better one, take take your weakest one out. Here's what Tim had to say about Squarespace. I have gone through a bunch of their designs. I love the variety. There are so many options to choose from, not only design, but for selling products, domains, et cetera, et cetera. I love using Squarespace. Yes, Squarespace is pretty amazing. They're a fantastic way to host your website, no matter what type of website it is, but especially photography portfolios. If you want to check out Squarespace, head to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. If you love it, you get a 14-day free trial, no credit card required, so you can just put up your best pictures and see how easy it is to use. If you love it, the coupon code CHELSEA will give you 10% off. Yeah, and if you try the 14-day free trial, you can submit it to the show, and we'll review your trial too. So you don't have to buy it to be reviewed, but you do have to have a Squarespace for us to review it because we're like that. Um, I have to say that when I look up a professional photographer, I go to their website before their Instagram or anything. And I've had more professional contacts through my website than my Instagram. Yeah, I much prefer to look at somebody's portfolio. Mm -hmm. You never know with Instagram. Okay, we're looking at street photography photos. Uh, I think this is a compelling moment. I like the one eighth shutter speed here. We have this guy sort of moving through the frame that makes it a little more interesting. Um, I think it's a really compelling shot. And I like that they included all this water coming down. Interesting moment. I wanna know who he's talking to and why he's looking like that. But I definitely think he's an interesting character. Let's see this one. Well, I don't know if that's a tiny crop or oh, why I think is it's it so blurry. It's very cropped, but it's yeah, it's very blurry. Sorry. Wait. Let's jump forward and find a picture that really grabs us. Okay. We're looking for composition. We're looking <laughs> hey, that's for Jay Leno. Jay Leno. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh you know, we're looking for composition like this, natural framing, but then this person, there's no subject separation. The cars are behind them and they're both equally in focus. So you're not seeing them. Of yeah. Course, that's cute. Hang out at that archway and wait until somebody interesting comes yeah. through, but just plant yourself there and wait for two hours. And it's fine because people will be more comfortable with you waiting there. So find a spot that's a good background and wait for people to walk through it. That's okay. That's the way it's done. If you have the time. So again, this is, a, I like the story. She's throwing this food to the ducks and this one's looking at her, which I think is very cute. Um, but the scene is just very cluttered. Let's see, street photography is hard. I love seeing people in their windows like that. I like this one. Yeah, I like that one too, actually. Like this little thing leads right down to him. Mm -hmm. I don't know, there's something neat about it. <laughs> It's a nice expression for yeah. me. Okay. Okay. Huh. Whoa. You caught quite a moment, didn't you? Controversial. Yeah, but I want to see a face in there too, don't you? Yeah, the person that's burning it. Like, what are they looking like? Are they happy about it? Are they angry? Like, yeah. I want to know more about the emotions behind this controversial act. And then that street light in the background is, is very distracting to me. I know, like, you've got split seconds to kind of work this out. It can be really tough. I just want to bring up the exposure here. I think because he's, like, stopped and engaged the camera, it's almost a street portrait at that time, but he seems to be in costume, or the photo is 200 years old, but let's say it's he's in costume, he's engaged you. Say, hey, do you mind if I take your picture? And then step forward. And now you're doing an impromptu street photo. And I think his answer would have been, I would love it if you took my picture. I, You know what I have even more success with? Instead of just saying, do you mind if I take your portrait, I, picture, I tell people why. So I'll say, oh, your outfit's so interesting. I like the way you look. Can I take a picture? And then they know why. And I feel people get freaked out if they're like, what do you want a picture of me for? It's just a hunch. But I think the real challenge with this particular gentleman is 
ooh, disengaging him. <laughs> he would start to tell you about why he's dressed like that. And he'd be like, oh, I have like a con call. I got to jump on real quick. I got to. And he'd be like, oh, but let me just tell you, if you like my outfit, you can. No, no. <laughs> Thanks again. Um, this is interesting. Just push in there. Just get closer to your subjects. I like the fog. I like the subject separation. Like none of the people are overlapping. It makes it so weird and interesting. And I'm yeah. giving it a pick. I like the processing too. That's interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> Look at this guy judging us in the middle. He's giving you so much side eye. Are you dead from that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting shot, Marcel. What's the... I wish there were just a little bit less depth of field. Just I, I was thinking the same thing too. It's one of those cases where like a 51.4 on a full frame can really but help. What are these two talking about? I love this picture. I don't know what she just said to her, but she, wow. And then he. Is he's just, just cool. eavesdropping, I think. Yeah, he's listening. He's like, mm hmm. He is just judging you. Wow. I like that picture a lot. This is going to be me, the keeper of the dogs one day, just walking with my my wolf pack. Yeah. Interesting shot, Michael. Good subject of separation there. I wow. like the low angle. I like the color. Wow. They are bright. <laughs> <laughs> something that's kind of sweet about that. Yeah, I like that photo. I don't think I'd call it street photography, but I like it. I go right to this guy who's making kind of a sassy face. Yeah, though my eye doesn't really rest anywhere. I also thought I wanted to go to Chinka Terry, but it looks kind of busy, so I think I'm going to hold off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's busy there. Wow. Oh, okay. okay. Is, this doesn't seem like street photography, but I, I'm impressed with your Billie Eilish style makeup. Oh, I really like this guy's expression and as well as the movement in it. Good light there. Ooh. Okay, that's a lot ghosty. of movement. Sam, do you have any other questions or comments for us? <gasps> Northrop right. Road? Street photography. You get a pick, <laughs> sir. I do have a few, actually. I have some some good ones here. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Let me scroll up a little bit here. Um, Quinn, Quintavious Oliver says, do you think people are more inclined to buy individual prints and galleries or entire books of street photography? I happen to like street photography books. That doesn't mean I wouldn't buy a gallery print, but I, I like someone's collection of how they view a place and the people in that place. So I have like a Gary Winogrand book and we have Vivian Mayer. Yeah, now that I think about it, we've bought a lot, but never bought a print. But I don't know how that, I would have to talk to somebody making a living as a street photographer. I like the, the books. Yeah. Um, Core, nine, uh, Core 996 says, can you pose people in street photography? Or is that sort of frowned upon? It's I mean, people do it all the time. Street portraits at that point, I right? think it's street portraiture. And I think it happens a lot and is passed off as candid. Mm -hmm. Um and a lot of very famous pictures are posed. Yeah. Like you, they interview the people later and they're like, they told me to do that. And you're like, what? Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, it's not street photography if it's posed. It's street at that portraiture, point, I think. Yeah, it's something different. And passing something off as candid when it's not is not okay. What else, Sam? I, I loved this reflection shot. I just, Tyler did a good job of finding an interesting spot, the reflection, and then just waiting there for somebody to come through. Maybe it could have even been more compelling, like maybe a bike goes through or something, but. I have a couple of paid, a uh, couple of more paid questions that came through. Uh, Greg H. again, who had initially donated the 50 Canadian dollars, has now upped the game to 70, which is now $53.69. Wow, wow. Why money at us? <laughs> Sam doing the conversion. Uh, he says, uh, hey, I'll fund that show so it's worth it for you. Cheers from Montreal. Here's the question. I'd love to know what you guys think of Tatsuo Suzuki. Uh, he's an, a street photographer in, who has sort of an in-your-face style. Do you know of him? And I what don't, do you think of him? I don't know of him. I'm Can sorry. you spell that name for me, Sam? I'll look it up real quick. T-A-T-S-U-O-S-U-Z-U-K-I. 
Z-U-K-I. And hopefully that does not take you to a site that is maybe hopefully it's real. Oh, actually I have. I have seen. I have seen. Okay. Tattoos work, yeah. yeah. Um, let me see if I can get the screen a little bit bigger. Oh, my, I always have the wrong keys. Is that going from Control Mac to PC? B. Yeah. <laughs> I'm having that same problem all the time. We all switch to Mac, but then we use PC down here, and then my keyboard shortcuts are so messed up. Um, I can't, where... Let me see what he has for prints. So I think these are great examples of the kinds of things that we're looking for. Each one of the characters is interesting. They are very close up. They're filling the frame. There's eye contact with every single one of them. None, none of them are just a wide angle shot with the subject small in the frame walking away. And that's the kind of thing we're seeing repeatedly. And um, it takes a lot of courage to get this close to a subject, um, especially with a wide angle lens like Tatsuo seems to be using. But that's what makes these really compelling images. You know, he's Tatsuo has engaged all of these people. That's so scary. I do feel like with this picture, he was standing there, and as people walked by him closely, he just took pictures. And I, th I could be mistaken, but especially here, it looks like he's just walking by and is close. And I think that that's how he's getting close to people. It's not about finding someone and being like, "You look neat," and like getting in their face you kind of like hunker down and you become a person who's already there in this territory and people walk into it and they're more comfortable. And a lot of street photographers will actively step in front of people to really get those kind of close tight shots. Dang. So to answer the question, yeah. I'd I throw hands. Work. Right, Justin? Justin would throw hands. He... Yeah, you got to throw those hands. Yeah, you don't get in Justin's way. <laughs> Justin would be it. like, <laughs> just kidding. Justin's so mild mannered. I There's like something, this picture. Yeah, it's the, about the color and sort of the engagement, right? Yes, like they're telling a story. I really feel like these kids are more wise than me. They seem to be much cooler than me. <laughs> I don't know. Something about her expression is making me laugh. <laughs> she has the biggest cup in the world. Yeah. <laughs> or just a medium in America. <laughs> yeah, that's a small at Starbucks. Okay, that's a pretty arrangement. I love that. I'm giving it a pick. Ooh. That's more like street portraiture and the light is beautiful. I think if that big tower weren't coming right out of his head, though, like maybe just a half a step to the left. Oh, spooky. Oh, this is really compelling. Pick. I like that. What's he up to? Mm, Scratches his nose, having a cigarette. <laughs> this is good in that we're getting a little bit closer. Mm-hmm. Interesting processing. That guy looks like Joel McHale right here. You know who I'm talking about, Justin, from Community? I do. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, I got a little click. Whoa. 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 Okay, I'm going to give this one a pick. <laughs> yeah, good it's expression. It's close. It's intimate. Good expression. Interesting story. Interesting subject. Ooh, good reflection. Just shooting down like that. And mm -hmm. you, you clearly waited. Very cool. I'm giving you a pick as well. You guys did really well on this one. I like what y'all put out. Look at that size of that fish head. What? Wow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> this reminds me of a Handmaid's Tale. Oh, yeah, you're right. Where they hang them? Mm hmm. That might be the exact same spot. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Y'all really did it this week. So I hope people took some suggestions away from this. Like, Oh, get in front of people, like get close. Um, that's that's a great example. And uh, have an engaging story. Tony, I'm concerned about gravity. <laughs> <laughs> and good street photography really takes a lot of time and a lot of bravery, and you're not going to have all that bravery on day one. You have to get out there and make yourself comfortable with it. Just keep doing it over and over again for years. And it definitely helps to have the right personality, what? too. I don't think everybody can be a good street photographer. Someone just said dogs always get a pick and then Chelsea goes by and picks a dog. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, true. It's, it's really true. <laughs> I thought that was funny. It's kind of true. This one's also really cute. We got yeah. a couple more final questions. Would you like those? Yes, yeah. good. 
Oh, All right. Uh, Jimmy Picks actually did a paid question. Uh, it's more of the suggestions. So we have a bunch of suggestions for shows. Okay. That's okay. great. Um, so, well. I like, uh, I like the shot. Me too. That I pick. Okay. So Jimmy says, I have a suggestion for next week since we're in a heat wave. I see this going off the rails deeply in it, but I'm going to read his question. How about the theme is global warming? Uh, we also have okay. suggestions from DeWitt Bacon, <laughs> uh, entertainment photos, street or stage performers. We are doing street now. So, um, but, uh, and there you go. I like the idea of heat. I probably wouldn't call it global warming just because for whatever <laughs> reason that's become a controversial topic no, but yes. but i think heat is an interesting topic trying to convey heat we did summer not too long ago though and that's yeah. so similar don't you think but it has been outrageously hot so i'm thinking a lot about being hot lately we were just in new york city and it was 96 but that's like 120 in new york i was so hot i couldn't eat and maybe you don't know me well enough but that's catastrophic <laughs> yeah goes into just a terrible spiral chelsea's not just eating just we're yeah. supposed to be 100 degrees on Saturday. 100 degrees. Oh, we're leaving. Yikes. We're hey, leaving. Justin. Yeah? You have a nice comment here in the chat. If you oh, know. okay. It says, uh, please, from Jim Setzer, please tell Justin his live production work is inspirational. Well done. You don't get enough credit for your work. Wow, I'm shiny. Justin, <laughs> well done. Thank Justin. you. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> I much appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, Justin's keeping a lot of complex stuff together. It's amazing the amount of tech that he is handling in real time. He it's a totally hands. different thing to be doing this live. <laughs> he needs more hands. Thank you, Justin. Um, and thank you, Squarespace, for making this show possible. If you want to try your very own Squarespace website for free, no credit card needed, you don't have to remember to cancel. Just go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and sign up for that free trial. And if you like it, use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. That's saving you real dollars, people. All the monies, 10% of it. All right. We'll announce our next week's theme soon. So follow us on Twitter and Facebook and we'll Instagram. tell you there. Yeah. Thanks, Sam. Bye. See y'all next week. See Bye. you guys. Thanks for sending your pictures in. That is all. That is oh, all. Those were some nice pictures. You got through almost all of them.